<clears throat> oh, how's it going, guys? This is Rio Morata, photographer based in Tokyo. We meet again, and I found out that my video, I already shot it, but the audio input wasn't in, so I can't <laughs> hear my voice. So I'm redoing this video again. So, uh, recently, a new facility opened up in Shibuya, and if you guys know, Shibuya has been going for going in this sort of like massive transition moving it's sort of like subways and relocating them to different air to different area to make it much more efficient for the commuters to like change like trains when they we're going to work and stuff like that and it's sort of like hard to explain but uh this sort of like multi-purpose building called shibuya scramble square popped out i think it came out last year this year if i'm right and it's like really hard to explain it's like a multi-purpose building which there's a shopping area and on top of that there's a restaurant and on top of that they made a sort of like observatory area similar to roppongi's sky deck aka tokyo city view and this is basically an area where the helicopters tend to land but you guys know these areas never get used at all so they open up for the public and you can basically pay a uh, entrance fee to like observe from the ground up actually so i actually wanted to sort of like visit this area specifically because it's in the middle in the tokyo and due to this pandemic uh, being stuck indoors and most of the time i thought it would be a great time maybe to visit since this pandemic is starting to wind down especially in tokyo and at the same time japan is starting to open up for foreign visitors and tourists so before diving in and shooting this area there are three precautions that i have to mention in my video because people will get hit hard i was hit hard actually so if you watch this video we will know what i'm going to be talking about so one is that this hit freaking hard which hits a lot of people who shoot with a GW690 because because there's like so many security guards within this area there's like 10 actually on the rooftop you cannot there's a rule actually you cannot change your film stocks on the rooftop and when I heard that I was like fuck <laughs> kind of so you gotta be kidding me so so basically you have to install your film before going to the rooftop so when I say rooftop when I say rooftop going outside actually so there's basically an area where you can basically like sit around on the indoor area type of area so and this got me thinking because gw690 you guys know you can only shoot eight shots per roll so after you finish shooting there's a way around this after you finish shooting you basically have to go indoors and swap out your film sock and basically had to take out the wrapper the paper wrapper and stuff like that backing and stuff like that and install it in and when they have it installed you go out back out and start shooting again and when we finish that roll you basically have to go back in <laughs> basically that sort of the process keeps on going so keep that in mind so and if you and i guess the gw690 isn't the best <laughs> camera to shoot this around this area and I would highly recommend a camera that can shoot more shots per roll like a 6 or a 5 or maybe a 35 mil film format because you will probably have enough like shots on when that one roll actually when shooting this area specifically so and I guess there's actually a reason why they do this and one of the main reasons is basically they don't want people to like throw away the garbage and you guys know that when you drop like a lens like two meters above ground although this lens weighs like what to 300 grams when you drop it from two meters above ground it becomes double that the impact of that damage becomes like two becomes like 400 500 grams i fail physics so i can't explain it to you guys but you guys know the concept so exact same thing if you drop like a film stock <laughs> what 300 400 meters above ground film stocks tend to weigh what 10 20 grams <laughs> that becomes what like 100 grams of dead dead weight and and because of shibuya there, it's like a crowded area there's like so many areas where there's so many people it's highly likely that you're gonna hit someone <laughs> with if you drop a film stock or any kind of garbage actually so i guess in order to prevent that there's this sort of like strict rule of not giving people the you know the chance to like basically change the film socks up in the rooftop so keep that in mind okay so precaution number two is that you cannot bring a bag outside and this was another one that kind of got caught me off guard but there is they have 
this is like similar to Roppongi's like sky deck, observatory deck. When you, if you have a bag or if you have some, yeah, if you have some kind of backpack or any kind of camera bag, you basically have to st stick that in a locker and that locker costs like $1 or so and you basically stick it in 100 yen and you lock your bag into that locker and after you like retrieve that bag, you get your $1 back. It has that kind of like function basically. So, and this also got me thinking that, okay, so if I want to like change my film stocks, I basically have to smuggle film in my pocket and basically when I go shoot out, finish that roll, when I come indoors, I don't want to like access the, you know, the locker because it's a tedious task. I don't want to do that. So basically like there's an area where you can basically sit and I basically sit down and take out the smuggled film stock and, and chuck it into my GW690 and, and load it in, go back out and when I finish shooting, come back in and, and use that smuggled. <laughs> that word's not right, correct way of saying it, but basically you guys get the point, but yeah, stick in my film stock and then shoot out again. And then I won't have to access my camera bag, which is in my locker. So, and when I finish like shooting, I basically go back and retrieve my camera bag, which is in the locker. And then I can basically browse around that floor or that area specifically. So, so precaution number three is, I guess this applies to the observatories deck in Roppongi too, but when you purchase your ticket, it's like a one ticket, one entry only kind of ticket. So you can basically only enter once during that specific time, actually, when you purchased it. And this is sort of like going to be an important one for either film photographers or digital shooters, because if you shoot with a film, I know that you guys are going to be shooting during the day in the morning or maybe in the afternoon either way it's fine but if you're like a digital shooter you have that opportunity to shoot at night and because you guys know that digital you can bump up the iso and today's standards digital cameras mirrorless dslrs you name it all you can even if you bump it up to 1600 iso 3200 iso 6400 iso or one 12,800 ISO, I mean, you won't get that much of a degradation, degrade in image quality. Honestly, well, 12,800, you might get a crappy image, but like 6,400 ISO in today's standards, I mean, you can get a decent image right now, honestly. So you have that option of shooting during the night and that's actually another great time to like shoot, especially photos in this area because you don't have that much of an opportunity to shoot in these like high skyscraper areas. And this is actually one of the locations probably to like shoot at night photos too. Time around, surprise, surprise, I will be shooting with a Kodak Gold 200. Finally got my hands on it, oh yeah. And along with a GW690 as always. The third, Lupin the third, and let's get going to the Shibuya Scramble Square.
so yeah. So, did I forget something? Oh yeah, the price of the tickets actually will vary depending on when you like purchase it. If you purchase it on the day, it's gonna get expensive. It becomes like $18. However, if you like do some kind of reservation beforehand, they give you like a 200 yen discount, like one $2 discount, and it becomes like $16, which becomes really affordable actually. This is sort of like made towards the locals, Japanese people living in Tokyo actually, but they, and I guess Japanese people like this like function, but like, Tokyo Disneyland and I guess Universal Studios and uh, I can't remember, but there's a bunch of areas actually. Japan tends to have this like one year pass, like I don't know, sort of available for the public actually. And this Shibuya Scramble actually had a one year pass for $45. I basically looked at it and I was like, so one entrance is like roughly $18. And if I go there more than three times, I can get my money back. <laughs> and because due to the fact that I want to shoot during the day, in the morning, afternoon, at night, that's three times already. Three times $18, $48. It, I can make my money back actually. So I actually purchased the sort of like the ear pass. And if I go more than three times, I make my money back. And I'm not sure if this like sort of like, sort of like, ear passes available for the foreigners out there because I'm, I'm not sure if it is if it is I might be a bargain for some people but it will only apply for people who are probably like staying in Tokyo for a long time actually so keep that in mind and also that this Shibuya scramble square is open the rooftop is open from it's open from 9 30 to 21 20 which is the Japanese way of taking time, 21 hours, 20 minutes is like 9.20 at night actually. So that's like basically the final time where you can basically enter. However, it officially closes at 10.30. So you can basically go in at nine o'clock and you can basically stick around for one hour and 30 minutes or so before it officially closes. Okay, so after shooting with this film stock, it's like really hard to explain for someone who actually shot this on the first time, on the first try. So I was like really surprised because if you ever did a flat scan on the Kodak's Gold 35 on a flat bath scanner, like Epson's flat bath scanner, I had like so many issues because I couldn't get it right. And similar to Ektar 100, actually flat bed scanners tend to do poorly on those two film stocks specifically. And because of that, I basically purchased, uh, I made a video on it, The Plus Tech 80, 100, uh, sort of like a 35, dedicated 35 mil like foam, sort of like scanner. However, this 120 version of the Gold 200, and I heard from a lot of people that Kodak actually tinkered around with a formula, which they meant made it sort of suitable for flat bed scanning. They, I, I mean, I was actually surprised that it actually looks really nice in my opinion, and. Obviously, the if you do flat bath scans using uh, Epson's GTX 830, which is like a V550 or 600, if I'm right, I scan using the Silverfast software, and in the presets, there's no Gold 200. Yes, there might be a Gold 200 for 35 mil, but there was no option for a Gold 200, the new version, the 120 medium format version. So I basically did, basically like checked every single Kodak presets. And in my mind, this is sort of like my biased opinion, but I think the Kodak Gold 200 looks really nice, especially when it's in the presets of the NC160 on the Silverfast like presets. This is a sort of like my biased view, but because this NC is basically new, sort of like neutral color, so it's not much, it's not that saturated. However, it has enough saturation and at the same time, it has enough contrast built in within this preset. So it kind of sort of shows that the potential of the sort of like films, like what we call negative, color negatives. And I was also surprised that this does not have that much of a sort of like a dynamic range compared to the Portra series. However, it's, it sits kind of in the middle between Ektar 100 and the Portra 400. It has enough contrast, it has enough dynamic range, and it has enough saturation 
it has a little bit more saturation with the port than the portra actually so this is a really interesting film stock and i actually love shooting with it and editing with it because it wasn't that hard to add it at all i'll stick in some photos for you guys so this is sort of like a flat scan i tinkered a little bit with the colors but i haven't tinkered with exposure so this would probably be what it would look like and also this is probably what it would look in my mind what a better like sort of like edit would be and what's interesting is i only had to like bump up the mid-tones by like 10 20 or so plus 10 20 or so and to get this result and it's like really like fascinating that they actually made it they pulled it this off and making this a great like film negatives to edit in i mean there are people out there who would prefer to have more contrast like the original like like photo that i posted well for me you guys know that i like to get it a little bit overexposed i like that dreamy look so i tend to pull up the midtones more than usual i have to admit that this building is probably the best area to look down on people not don't look at down on people but like looking down at the view of shibuya because shibuya is actually an interesting location because because I guess if you go to a really urban area, the cityscape changes drastically at a fast pace because new things get built, old things get, you know, deconstructed and stuff like that. Well, if you go to the suburban area, the less urban area, there not much changes over time, but Shibuya specifically, it changes drastically over the time. And there has been a lot of buildings, a lot of constructions, a lot of like things going on around this area. And you can basically see a lot of things around because it's already in the urban area. You can also like find Tokyo Tower. You can find the Modi building that I took a photo of. And also you can see the Shibuya's famous uh, pedestrians. I forgot the name. Oh, fudge. <laughs> but yeah, there's like a lot of things to like look around this area so yeah if you're in, ever in tokyo please visit this area so hope you enjoy this video and i'm sorry to say that this was a long video but yeah we will see you next time peace out fellow photographers